Hi, welcome to the Stock Trip. I'm Seth Rosenberg, and today I'm here with Kelsey Ramsden from MindCure. Um, before we get started, I do want to let you know that I am an investor in the, sec in the sector and in MindCure directly. Um, I think it's a company that is great, and that's why I wanted to have Kelsey on today to talk about it. So first, Kelsey, can you tell us about what MindCure is and does and uh, what your place is in this, in this sector? Yeah, absolutely. So we're what I like to call an integrated psychedelics company. So we built our strategy on horizons of revenue and ensuring that we show up in those places. So we really focus on three things. Number one is how can we sell into the psychedelics market while some psychedelics are not legal? That's with nootropics and some pre and post supplements uh, for psychedelia. The second is a digital therapeutics platform. It's called iStream. And we believe that we will be the backbone of the rollout uh, wingman to therapists and, and, and clients or patients. And then the third is of course, novel, novel molecule research. So what are we doing to advance the science in a way that we're affording the opportunity for these medicines to come to market? So that's what we're focused on. Um, well, that is a lot, that is awesome. Um, so on your website, you have these five spheres. Can you hmm. explain what those are and, and, and how those, uh, you know, factor into your corporate strategy? Yeah, I mean, I think when we look at psychedelic medicine, the advancement of the industry, again, we're looking at the, the nootropics piece. So what can we do to what I call build the market for the medicine? So there's lots of us in the echo chamber right now. We're already on board. We're believers, but there's a whole market of people who are not even yet here and we want to yeah. help educate them. So we talk about, you know, story moving culture and that's what we need to do on that side of things. And then when we talk about, you know, data moving science, which is what's going to bring these things into market in a really efficacious and, and profitable way, that's where we look at um, our novel molecule research, our CGMP scale up. So how do we develop a drug so we can bring it to market? Um, our digital therapeutics. So how do we support the whole industry in making sure we have therapists who are well-trained, who deploy the, the medicines in a perfect way? as well as how do we have patients who understand how to integrate these things. Um, and so those are the five spheres in the way that we're approaching the market from an end to end model. Um, I think one thing I, I, I think is important for all investors to consider is this idea of it's not just about the molecule, right? So we have a lot of patents, a lot of people going on around molecules and there's lots of value there. I don't want to diminish it. Everybody likes a Hail Mary, but there is this piece around integration Sure. that no one else is talking about, uh, which blows my mind because anyone who's actually been involved in psychedelic therapy knows like 5% is what happens in session and 95% is what you do after you leave the therapist's office to integrate that experience into your life and get the real change. And we're the only company that's developing a digital therapeutics platform to address that. It's just- Can you explain a little bit better how that would work? Yeah, for sure. So through um, wearables and taking biometrics paired with specialization for what we call integration protocols, along with the drug protocol, so the medicine protocol. And when we do that, we have therapists who are able to identify the best medicine protocol for their patient. And then pairing that with how we care for patients when they've left the building, so to speak. Sure. And that is a series of a variety of things that can be um, breath work, it can be meditation, it can be journaling, it can be a whole bunch of things. Ours is backed by AI. So it, you know, if Seth is a guy who goes there through therapy, it reads what's going on for Seth and says, hey, man, you know, we noticed this about you. What about if you try this? What about if you do that? So this big, you know, expansion that we have in psychedelic therapy has a place to land. You're not left going, thanks, thanks a bunch, Seth. Good luck to you. I mean, I could see, you know, I mean, so many of the models include two therapists for eight hours. Right. And then maybe a follow up. So right. I, I, it's, there's really, uh, I think, a lot of room for for people, uh, you know, post uh, post therapy or I guess the therapy, I guess post therapy is probably the wrong word considering the therapy is, you know, ongoing after. Um, I do want to ask you real quick. There's news today that you hired a new COO and what does that mean for management and what was the, who is he and what was the thinking behind uh, bringing on new people? Yeah, his name is Tarek Labadi. Our team is growing really fast. So there'll be a new VP of growth and partnerships. Um, you know, I won't, I won't tip my hat to too many of the new folks who are coming on, but I will say Tarek is exceptional in that. The way that I'm working on building the team kind of twofold. One, 
do they have experience and understanding of our industry? So everything about building our team is purpose-built. We're not just going, oh, they were here, or, oh, they did this thing, or they can rinse and repeat. It's about, do they understand psychedelics? Do they understand clinical models? Do they understand drugs? Tarek does all those things. And, and can they get behind a strategy that is differentiated? So we're not just doing molecules, say like a mind matter, just, you know. Um, and so Tarek, what he led Johnson and Johnson in Morocco, he was a country leader for a number of years and uh, understood not only kind of strategic deployment and running something, you know, being responsible for the money that people are investing in these businesses, which is a whole nother topic we can talk about. Um, but also he understands medicine, you know, it's important to have people in the work who, who themselves can relate to what these things can do for people. You're suggesting not everybody uh, in the industry. No, no, there's a few <laughs> people in the industry who, and, and again, no offense, right? I never like to put anybody else down, but there are lots of forces in the industry. They're just pure capital markets plays. They're like, you know, we saw this happen in cannabis. We saw this happen somewhere else. Let's put together a team of people who already did that rinse and repeat, which is great. And it's a model. But I think what differentiates psychedelics and the people who've worked in this space for a long time know there is something that's nuanced and different about the power of psychedelics and our ability to drive real change that results in real revenue and so where some people are focused is I think misdirected as to where the revenue in this model will be when it's fully developed. So on, on that note, um, how, how scalable is, is mind cure these and how, how proprietary is, is your business at, at this, at this minute? Yeah. So it's early days. It's a bit the wild west, the benefit of mind cure and part of those people that we're bringing onto the team are they've been around psychedelics for a long time. You look at Dan Angle, on our team, Hamilton Morris, like myself, people with relationships. So how proprietary is it? I think moreover, it's about relationships. So can we get our digital therapeutics in the I mean, I, I mean, honestly, there's a move on one sphere to be proprietary, and then there's a move on the other sphere to develop relationships, it seems to me, in the psychedelic industry. So, uh, you know, I, I can certainly understand that, that you know, there, there is some real merit to, you know, being either the first or the best to market rather than being able to protect something that people don't necessarily want. Um, yeah, I mean, look, these are our minds we're talking about and people are going to trust us with their minds. So who do you trust? Do you trust people who have relationships with longstanding industry partners who have been doing this work at their peril in many cases for years? Or do you trust people who are just showing up and going, hey, we can produce something new in, in the lab and give that a run. And, and that could be interesting. I'm kind of more on this side of things. Like let's take partnerships and develop relationships with people who know what work out there, bring that into the lab and proof it. How about that as a model? And so that's the way we're doing it and how I think we create a proprietary play just by being the fastest because we know it works out there and we bring it in the lab and we proof it. It seems pretty straightforward to me. Um, on that note, uh, what is your sort of going to, uh, you know, business valuation and all of that, you know, in looking at the sector right now, it seems that there's a tremendous amount of enthusiasm driving mm -hmm. stock prices and not a lot of fundamentals. And um, mine, Cure is one of the few companies out there with a revenue, um, but the valuation isn't as enthusiastically driven as some of the other companies out there. Do you have any idea what is going on or thoughts on, on the matter? So there's kind of, there's two things to me. One is like we're trading currently a little over two times cash, which to me is crazy relative to, you know, the same ratio in other companies. What we have not done has gone out waving our hands and saying, look at us, look at us, we're so great. We've gone, let's develop a really great strategy. Let's develop a really strong team. And only when we have it in the bag and it's something to really stand on, let's talk about it. I mean, there's two ways to, to look at that. You could say, gee, that's, that's not so good. You should have gone out waving your hands and saying, look at us when you really didn't have anything but a bunch of ideas, like some folks. 
again, nothing negative. It's just a different way of approaching the market. Um, and I, and I also think we have a disparity between where people see the value. There are some people who will want to bet on the long bomb. They're like, I'm putting all my money in novel molecule development. And out of a hundred thousand plays, I'm hoping to come across the line and we're willing to bet on, you know, how long that takes. When are these drugs going to be available to market? That's, that's a way to invest. And then there's another way that I think is fundamentals based, which I've always been a pragmatist, like show me the money, show me when, tell me how. Sure. Um, and so although I appreciate all the interest in our industry, I would encourage anyone, and you, just, you don't have to look at mine here, look at the businesses who've actually taken this as a business. You know, when are we making how much and when and delivering some results in a time frame so that you know, what'll happen, just it happens in every industry, there'll be lots of excitement, that'll die off for a period. And if there isn't a business, people will just die on the side of the road, you know, and, and, and not be able to fund all the research, because this is very expensive work. Sure. And we, we intend on funding it in part, of course, through the market, but in part by driving big revenue in the meantime. That's um, all right, one more question. And if I don't ask this, Red, it will not forgive me, which is okay. Ibogaine and Hamilton Morris, and what are you guys doing? And I think we all saw the uh, Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia with the synthetic Ibogaine and uh, Curious as he's on your board and you guys have just made some pretty big announcements with Ibogaine, what is going on there? Yeah, I mean, I wish I could show you all my cards, but this is part of the deal being publicly traded. We can't show you all our cards, but we can share with you or I can share with you that, I mean, I'm sure the people who are following your show are pretty well uh, well-educated. What we know about the aboga plant is that there are four more powerful molecules than ibogaine. And ibogaine has a profile that can be a little bit risky. The great thing about ibogaine is in Canada, it is currently legal. So we have a market up here already. And so the way that we're approaching it with MindCure is this, again, this horizons of revenue thing, which is what can we do today what can we do next? And what can we throw a long bomb on where we think there can be material value? And the people on our team might indicate that they have some ideas of what, what that could look like. Uh, but in the meantime, we're developing traditional Ibogaine because it's legal here and we can start doing our own research in a way that we can start building that model. Um, I also think it's worth mentioning this. We didn't touch on it, but Clinic models like Field Trip, and I was an early investor in Field Trip. I, I, I know Ronan and participated in their seed round in their Series A and Atma. So, what we're doing at MindCure is creating strategic. Just, uh, real quick, I just want to be clear. I am also an investor in Field Trip. Okay, cool. Um, well played, sir. <laughs> um, uh, we are placing equity bets in clinic models because we also believe that as things like our own Ibogaine and our own Ibogaine research come to play, those are the places where, you know, there's revenue to be made and there's data to be collected. Um, and there's a, there's a big day to play and there is a revenue model around uh, the clinical approach. So that, that toggles into our Ibogaine approach with, you know, the opioid ep epidemic and, and addiction recovery. And we think there's just a landslide that will come when I began uh, advances a bit. That is, some, I, I'm really fascinated with the I began thing. I, I, you know, I just can't read enough about it. Um, my final question is t-shirts. <laughs> if you'd like one, I will have one custom made for you, sir. Uh, uh, well, uh, you know, I'm just saying is, you know, people like a little swag, but I would, I would love a t-shirt just, just if, uh, if there's one, this is my, the crim starts today in Washington, DC, March 15th. Um, Kelsey Ramson, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate your coming out today. Once again, I am not a financial advisor. Do your own research. I am an investor uh, in the companies we talked about today. And, uh, and 